All right guys, time to do a quick little update and I'm gonna do two things in this video. One of them, I've been getting a ton of requests for. I didn't realize everybody would wanna see this so badly, but anyway, just a quick little update on the petunia cuttings. Everybody's wondering, how are the petunia cuttings doing? So I'm gonna take you around, we'll do that first. In fact, let's just do that now. I'll show you all the petunia cuttings and how they're doing and growing on and then we'll flip over to the next section here, which is gonna be about the hydrangea cuttings. So let's go to the petunias now. All right guys, so here's all those petunia cuttings that we took and you can see they're all getting flowers on them. Little, little plants with little flowers, but they'll grow big quick. Here's, I mean, it's amazing. Some of these are growing a little slower. We need to water under here because it's underneath the, the uh, shed here or the uh, lean-to. So uh, it doesn't get as much water unless we water, but this guy, right here you can see these guys some of these are still kind of small but they're flowering already and this guy right here is just huge that was one of the little cuttings and it is just taking off and my wife just decided let's plant all the cuttings all in one spot back in here which i think is pretty cool because they're going to take over now these are all the main parent plants that we took all the cuttings off of and they're just huge and growing like crazy and flowering well but eventually all those little cuttings back there and along the side are going to fill in this whole area and just be a ton of color here's the others on the other side of the porch you can see there's not as much sun gets in here so they're a little bit smaller still they'll take a little longer to grow and take off but they're doing really well and they're still flowering and growing on nice and then all, those are all the parents from this side here that we took i really like that yellow now the hydrangea cuttings i'm really excited about and want to show you something because I didn't I wouldn't have believed it unless I saw it myself. I don't know why I never I never believed this for some reason. I've had people all my life tell me that the soil acidity or alkalinity controls how the hydrangeas are going to flower and bloom and the colors of them. And I just never believed it. I don't know why. You know, we hear things in life sometimes and People, you know, tell you this is how this is going to happen, and I've heard this from a lot of people. I mean, it's pretty common knowledge, I guess, but for some reason, I just never thought it was a thing. But I found out very quickly, it is a thing. So I want to show you something that's really interesting to me. I hope it's interesting to you guys. Um, you probably already all know this, it sounds like. I've gotten tons of comments about the hydrangea flower color and everybody seems to know that the the acidity of the soil or the alkalinity controls the color. So, the hydrangea cuttings that I took down in Oregon last year, that hydrangea was super blue. I mean just dark blue. And in fact, I have a picture of that hydrangea right here. Check it out. So, that hydrangea was just this blue and I knew that if I took cuttings from it I was going to end up getting a deep blue hydrangea like this because with hydrangeas one of the things I've always wanted is a deep blue hydrangea and I ended up being able to get these cuttings and I knew I'd get that deep blue but I took those cuttings and if you saw that video which I'll post a link up here in the corner um, I took those cuttings and then this last spring I potted them up and I'll put a link to that video right here and then uh, overwintered them and there's a whole video about how I overwintered them that link will be right up here too but I got them through to now and I couldn't wait they, they started forming flowers on them I couldn't wait to see what color those flowers were going to turn out because I just knew they were going to be blue and long story short they're not blue you guys got to check this out I'm just like what in the heck but I did a little bit more research and I'm a believer now all right I mean it took me a while all right it took me a while you know we all got to learn we all got to you know seeing is believing I guess right it took me a while but I finally I'm a believer it does matter the alkalinity or the acidity of the soil matters and will control the hydrangea color let's go take a look at that right now all right guys you seeing it yet are you seeing it yet are you seeing it yet check that out I just I'm amazed I wouldn't have believed it unless I saw it isn't that crazy how faith works so thank you everybody for your responses and telling me that hydrangeas will change color based on soil I didn't believe you but uh, I do now and there it is man I mean this hydrangea I'll show you that picture again right now 
this hydrangea was taken off of this this hydrangea cutting was taken off of this dark blue hydrangea in this picture and here's my hydrangea right here in front of us that was taken off of that one and it is just bright pink it's a beautiful pink i love the pink color of it i i mean i'm happy with it but it's not the blue i wanted i'm just really amazed i wouldn't have believed it unless i saw it myself but there it is man i mean i've got both pictures of the deep blue and the bright pink and i think that's cool so to answer the question actually it's not your guys question it's my question does soil matter it absolutely does matter if you were also a skeptic here's the proof right here but aren't those little cuttings doing nice here's i mean this is another update i guess for all you guys who are wondering how did you overwinter your cuttings how did you get them through and are they doing okay now i get a lot of those questions i mean they're doing beautifully these hydrangeas are doing absolutely beautifully and i just i i couldn't be happier with them and they were just little cuttings that we took actually late in the year they were taken in august and didn't have many roots and we overwintered them and they're doing just great they're looking very beautiful even that one from hug point back there one of them's still not looking so special but the other one's starting to take off and i'm going to baby it and take real good care of it and turn it into a nice beautiful landscape plant all of these guys that we pruned if you watch that pruning video and i'll put a link to it right up here in the corner if you guys watch that pruning video you saw that i hacked these guys way back and here they are all starting to come out the the variegated white jelly and they're looking as beautiful as ever and i'm telling you by the end of summer they will be long and lanky and crazy growing i'll probably have to trim them one more time um and there's the java red white jelly if you're interested one last shot there's another one back there in the corner but um all growing very very nicely so i'm just totally amazed by that pink hydrangea now let's go over and talk about this for a minute all right, so you saw it yourself. It's right there in front of you. So I know you guys weren't skeptics about this. I got so many comments saying, Mike, it's the soil. And I kept saying, no, it's not the soil. It's not the soil. It's the soil. I answered my own question in this video, <laughs> in this little experiment. So I'm, I'm just amazed. I'm, I'm constantly learning new things in gardening and proving things to myself and teaching myself things. And that's what this is all about. And I'm just always so amazed about what takes place in the garden and what nature around us can do when it's put to the test. So anyway, a deep blue hydrangea that turned pink on its own. Now, I started researching it more now that I'm a believer, I'm not a skeptic anymore. And I started researching it. Okay, how do I turn this thing blue? Because I really do, in the end, I want a deep blue hydrangea. And the fact is, I love this pink so much, I may just keep some, take more cuttings and keep some pink. I probably will, if I can do that. But what I learned is that if you want to turn this blue, you have to have a more acidic soil. And if you want to turn it pink or keep it pink you have to have a more alkaline soil on the ph scale and in order to do that if you have one of these planted in the soil the way you need to turn and it's pink like that the way you need to turn it blue is by adding sulfur to it um, you can also go to any of the plant stores and most of them will have bottles of a fertilizer not necessarily a fertilizer i guess it's a somewhat of a fertilizer but it's got the materials in it that will and they'll say it turns a hydrangea blue or it turns a hydrangea pink well it's if it's turning it blue that sulfur is what's in there making it more acid uh, making the soil more acid and in order to turn it more pink if you have a blue hydrangea you need to add lime and sweeten the soil make it a little more alkaline and so that's the big secret sulfur for blue lime for pink now we know now i know and uh i'm a believer so if you want to turn your your hydrangea different colors that's what you got to do that's what i'll do from now on i think i will propagate this guy and keep some pink some blue now the one point i wanted to make too is do i you know the question i had was do i have to keep adding these fertilizers or these things every year i'm not now <laughs> once again i might teach myself something here but 
I'm convinced that, and I, I, I learned this information from the book, Teeming with Microbes. If you haven't read that book, it's a totally outstanding book and will help you understand soil structure. But where I had originally gotten this was from that book and it makes perfect sense to me. When you have a, a vegetable garden and you till the soil um, or you rough the soil up and you add compost and all that, the soil tends to be more alkaline and sweet. Um, if you add wood ashes to it, it'll be more alkaline. Vegetable gardens tend to like more alkaline soils and they tend to be that way when you till the soils up. Landscapes where you add mulch and you just keep adding layers and layers and layers of material over time, especially woody substances like wood chips uh, or you know branches or pine needles or things like this, things that take a long time to break down, it takes a while and, and the fungus gets in there and starts breaking it down versus the bacteria. And when you have fungally dominated soils, like in landscapes where you add mulch, it tends to create more of an acidic soil. And so I'm kind of, in at least right now in my mind, I'm convinced that even without adding, this is pink right now, but even without adding uh, certain fertilizers that'll make this blue, if I just planted it in the ground and I added layers of mulch each year and just kept adding layers of tougher to break down components that will attract fungus, I'm convinced that the soils will eventually become more alkaline over time, uh, or I'm sorry, more acidic over time, so that because it'll be fungally dominated and it will create a blue hydrangea even without adding anything to it. So in my mind, the way I'm thinking, and tell me if you think I'm wrong here, in landscapes over time, because we tend to mulch landscape plants, most hydrangeas would tend to want to be more blue and when I'm driving around I find that most of the hydrangeas in people's landscapes are blue. There's not a lot of pinks from what I'm seeing in my area at least. And so it would be tougher I would think to turn a hydrangea to a pink color from a blue because you would have to add a lot more lime and sweeten that soil up and naturally the soil would want to be more acidic in landscape plant environments. So anyway just in, a, in addition there, I, I think over time, hydrangeas are going to want to, depending on how you're planting them and how you're taking care of your landscape beds, they're going to want to tend to be more blue because of the acidic soil created by the mulches that are applied year after year or every couple of years. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this. I hope you learned something. I know I did. I mean, I, I turned myself into a believer from a skeptic. So... If you like this video, please like it. If you want to comment, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. If you want to see more plant videos, gardening videos, propagation videos, hit the subscribe button, guys. And thanks a lot for following along. I really appreciate it. By the way, we just hit 5,000 subscribers. You guys are totally awesome. I really appreciate this. Without you, it wouldn't make any sense for me to sit here doing this every day, right? Or every week or however often I'm doing it. But Thank you so much for being a part of the family. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your likes. And uh, until next time, I'll see you in the next video.